Boom! Welcome back to The Perfect Bag, everybody. My name is Clint, and it's time for another One Take Bag Review. That's right, and we've got a special one today, which you probably already know because there's this whole thing with thumbnails and titles before you click on it, so you're way ahead of me already. We are checking out the GWA Crew Bag. That's right. Now, technically, it is the GWA Citadel Micro Crew 01 Forest Colorway. Blah. It's a green backpack. Let's take a look. Wow. I love the look. What do y'all think? I think it's a really, really pretty backpack. Now, let's get some stuff out of the way. Well, heck, before we do that, let's do the intro. You know what we do on this channel, everybody? You're about to get a one take bag review. That's a full exterior and interior walkthrough of this bag from GWA. That's right. We're going to do all the features on the outside, all the nooks and crannies on the inside. After that walkthrough, you're going to get two things, you always do, that I love about this bag. Two things that I think could be better, and then an overall discussion about who might this be the perfect bag for. Let's get into it. Now, this is a backpack company. A bag company, a carry company, they do backpacks, they do pouches, they do um, fanny packs, they do uh, some really nice patches, they do some really eh, patches, that's my opinion, but they are prized. They are prized. And there's some really rare ones out there. This is a collect collectible bag company, small batch, one, one maker making these things, pushing them out, and finally have my hands on the two backpacks, the two backpacks that are most famous and sought after from this maker, from GWA. Now, what does GWA stand for? Headphones for the little ones, Gear Whores Anonymous. That's right, GWA. And they make the Citadel, good Lord, where did I put it? There it is. <laughs> I just rearranged the bag wall. The Citadel backpack and the crew backpack. We're gonna do a separate video on the Citadel backpack, and you're also going to get, and these are gonna come out rapid fire, you're also going to get a comparison between the two. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the difference between the two bags, watch both the videos, then watch the comparison video, and then watch 30 other videos from this channel. Worth a shot. All right, so everybody, let's dive into the exterior walkthrough first. Uh, gorgeous, right? So what is this bag made out of? GWA makes bags out of all kinds of materials. They've got some Dyneema ones that are pretty pricey. Um, I think they've got some Ultra ones, but this is 1000D Cordura. Good old 1000D Cordura with a 400D liner. It is really, I mean, this is probably, it's like a toss up. This and X-Pack are my favorite bag materials. I love 1000D Cordura. It feels like, and probably will, last forever. This is the kind of stuff that you would uh, throw off the back of a moving truck and it would just get a scuff and you'd brush it off and you'd be like, all right, cool. Uh, so great material, gorgeous bag. I really do like, this is, when I think backpack, like if I were gonna go into mid journey and type in backpack in a prompt, right? How is that? That's like 21st century, right? I think five years ago I would have said if I was going to go up to a five-year-old and say, draw me a backpack. But if I were going to go into mid-journey and put in the prompt, draw me a backpack, I think I'd get something that looks a lot like this. Something kind of like a Herschel or a Jansport. Something, you know, backpacky. And that's what we have here. Something very much backpacky. I'm obsessed over the details with this bag, kind of with every bag. But I'll get into some of the details going on here and the choices made that make this kind of a bag aficionado's bag, like a bag for bag lovers. We'll get into that. So really nice bag. And, you know, we're going to get into the features right now. You have hook and loop on the front. You have not AquaGuard zippers, which is, you think, wow, AquaGuard, AquaGuard, Aqu I think AquaGuard zippers may be one of the most overrated bag features out there. Now, I like AquaGuard zippers on a dedicated tech pouch. Outside of that, I like... 
I like the music of a sweet, smooth zipper pull. AquaGuard is tough to use sometimes, and so they've gone with super smooth, we'll call them non AquaGuard. we'll call them normal zippers, and they're really nice. We have uh, paracord with heat shrink, heat shrink material on them, uh, black to match the black details on this bag. We've got a bottle pocket on the side here, and it's a very stretchy bottle pocket. You could probably get, you know, a 32 ounce drink in there, but not, not one of those like 64 ounce protein shake situations. Um, that's, that's not this, that's not for here. They'd go in there. Um, but gorgeous, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're ever wondering about the stuff that I put in these bags, just drop a, drop a comment and I'll tell you what any of it is. All right. So drink holder on this side, very stretchy, elastic material, stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. Uh, so really nice, but not like disappearing. You can always tell that this is here. Visually, that's why so many makers out there, you know, opt out of bottle pockets because they don't like what it does to the profile of the bag, but uh, they leaned in here and they gave it a bottle pocket and it's a very unapologetic bottle pocket, right? All right, what about on this side, bottle pocket? Nope, you got one, two, three strips of Molly attachment points on this side, so you could attach a bag to the side of this, you could attach a secondary drink holder, you could clip a flashlight, you could, you know, choose your own adventure. You can do whatever you want, but I do like that. Rather than the kind of dual wheeled setup with multiple bottle pockets, they gave you the option and you can attach another bottle pocket if you wanted to, but you could do anything else if you wanted to. I think that's a good look. I do wish though, side handle would have been good on that side. Okay, all right. So on the back, what's going on here? We have a really comfortable strap setup. This is one of my favorite kind of setups for a back panel here. We've got cushioning where the bag rests up against you, bop, 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 um, and then you've got, the rest is a massive air channel. And then the stitching on the bag also kind of just highlights further the air channel. So overall, really, really nice setup back here. And these straps are actually very, very comfortable, even when the bag is fully loaded out. And you'll see, I've got this thing pretty fully loaded out. Looks good though, looks good. And it feels nice. You've got a sternum strap here, with strap keepers, very easily adjustable. And I said I wanted a grab handle on the side here. You do have a grab handle on the back attached here, a little nylon one. It's just okay, it's just okay. And I say just okay because this up here is stellar. This grab handle, I mean, might be one of the most comfortable grab handles I've ever seen on a bag. It is made out of the same 1000D Cordura as the rest of the bag, and it is beefy and it is tubular. It's got cushioning inside of it. It is super premium, and this one down here is the furthest thing from super premium you could possibly get. It's one inch nylon, not even seatbelt nylon, just forgettable. Okay, wow, great looking bag. Now it's time to get into camera number two, the overhead cam, so that we can see the guts of this bag and do the interior walkthrough. Why don't you meet me there? Let's do it. Okay, here we are, camera number two as promised. And this is the GWA Crew Bag. Citadel Crew, Micro Crew, it's the crew. Okay, so first off, we got the hook and loop here, but you can take these off if you're not a patch person, no problem. And the bag comes with a really nice matching silencer here, okay? Looks really good, covers up that hook and loop. Very, very nice. Doesn't add any extra dimension to the bag, fits very tightly, looks good. You got two pockets on the front here, which is really, really nice. And the organization is great in these pockets. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, you get your first look. Look at the orange. Isn't that a cool, watch, watch this, it's like a sunrise. Love it. Ah. Uh. Oh, so nice. Okay, what's going on in here? Well, in this bottom pocket, we have three subdivided sections here. I've tossed a cord in one. I've tossed a gaming device in one. And these pockets, you can see the downside of these pockets, super slim, super tough to get things out of. 
Reminds me a little bit of VanQuest Adax. There we go. Gaming device. So, a little tight down here, but three useful pockets. Not as usable of a, of a pocket as the top one. The top one is really, really nice. Opens up really wide. What do I have in here? I've got my AirPods in here. This is like a quick access pocket for you. Got my pocket knife in here, some antibiotics in here, and a wallet in here. So really, really useful. That's your quick access on this bag, and it is very, very nice. And just really, really nice. Okay, and look, this is that handle I was telling you about. Really great. Yeah, nice, nice handle. I think it's time because we don't have on the back of this bag any pockets. You don't have an external laptop sleeve. Um, yeah, so it's time for the main event, the main pocket here. And we do need to release these compression straps on the side and on the side. And then zip down because this is a full clamshell. What? Yeah, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. So I put a book in here, very heavy book, a vest in here, and then you can see that the whole back of the bag here is lined with hook and loop. What does that mean? That means you can do interior pouches if you want. You could fill up this whole interior with pouches, and there's a lot of companies that make pouches that fit inside, including GWA, okay? So hook and loop pouches for organizers, for a holster, for morale patches for anything you want up here you have a little hook this is for a hydration bladder okay and you can hook a hydrate hydration bladder bladder good god easy for me to say right and then you have a laptop sleeve here for a 15 inch laptop i've tossed a chromebook in there easy peasy over here you have two more pockets and these are great really roomy really useful tech in that one and my gimbal in the other one so overall just a ton of space in this bag like really 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 nice so on the inside two pockets and a laptop sleeve on the outside two pockets on the front gorgeous bag really really beautiful i'm a fan let's talk about this thing meet me back at camera number one okay friends that's the bag. That's the walkthrough inside and outside. So let's get into it. Two things that I really love about this bag. So the first thing is I really like the pockets on the front. Now they're very good. I've got a little something I want to talk about with the bottom pocket, but the top pocket is really good, especially the organization and the ease of access. Really nice replacement. Reminds me of the VanQuest Adax where they put the quick access as a top pocket on the front of the bag. Works really, really well. I'm gonna give you two other things that I like, but I'm gonna combine them into one because I like the cushion straps and the top handle, and it's the same cushioning, and it feels great. Feels great to wear, feels great to grab. Love both of those. It's a very comfortable bag. It's a very classic bag, silhouette-wise, but it's also a very comfortable bag, and it's very, very well made. So the attention to detail, this cushion strap, the uh, beautiful, beautiful zipper pulls, which are not over the top, right? They're just well made. They're all done well. They all feel great to grab. You've got these compression straps on the side, which at first glance, I said, hmm, 20 liter bag. Do you need compression straps? And then I was playing around on the internet and I saw that a lot of people will just flip these straps and buckle in a fanny pack into the front of this bag. So you got kind of a little mama and baby kangaroo situation going on where you've got the, the little pouch up front that you can unclip and turn it into a fanny pack when you want to depart from the mothership here. So really interesting. So you just pop these around and clip as long as your fanny pack has matching Duraflex buckles, which oddly enough, coincidentally, GWA's fanny packs have those buckles, right? Right, there's some other companies too. So, but you gotta, if you wanna do that, you just gotta make sure that you got the kind that clips into these buckles, but a really neat, cool thing, right? Yeah. Love the, love the bottle pockets. There's just a lot to like about this bag. It originally retailed for $280, okay? So we'll get into some of that at the end. Two things that I think could be better about this bag. Well, the first thing is dead simple, which is 
This bottom pocket is a little hard to use. And I said that I like it. I do like it. I don't like the organization inside of it. Just as a drop pocket, it's pretty dang great. But I would have done something different, maybe a zippered compartment inside. I would have laid out the pockets a little bit different. They're kind of hard to use, but not my favorite part of the bag to interact with. The second thing I'd already talked about, and it's this piddly little handle on the side here. It's just okay for me. It's just okay. Yeah, I would have replicated this handle and put it right here midway on the bag instead of on the back. So you can see when you hold it from this, it just kind of flippy floppies and it just digs into your hand a little bit if the bag is fully loaded out. So a second grab handle as nice as this one would be great. Who knows, maybe on some of the more recent iterations of the bag, that's already been addressed. I don't have one of the more recent iterations of the bag. I can only review the bag that I have, right? Okay, so let's talk about it. Is this a great bag? Yeah, it's pretty dang good. It's a great backpack. It's very simple, it's very classic, it's very well made. Um, this was, however, only purchasable through a Facebook group. And this is one of the more annoying ways to have to buy a bag. Um, and I get it, I get it. The maker is small and they're releasing a small amount of bags to people through their Facebook group and then you click over to their website, it's announced, it's a drop. And it's part of this whole drop thing that's going on with the EDC community, with special edition pocket knives and patches and pouches and um, water bottle holders and, and everything. And it's, you know, it's a fair way, I guess, of making sure that everybody has equal access to a limited supply item. Yeah, it's interesting. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like that way of doing business, but I don't know what the alternative to that would be uh, because not every small maker can ramp production to a point where everybody who wants this bag could have this bag. So think about it. If you're one person making bags by hand and there's 20,000 people who want your bag and it takes you, you know, three days to complete a bag, like do the math on that. I'm not going to do the math on that. I was told there would be no math. But you do the math, let me know, how many years is it going to take you to make enough bags for those 20,000 people? It ain't happening, so more likely you're going to make 50 bags. And that then becomes a problem for people number 51 through 20,000 who didn't get a bag and feel like it's impossible to get a bag. So you kind of can't win if you're a small maker. People don't want the drop culture, but, you know, what are you going to do? You can't just scale because you want to scale. You can't just get, there's no guarantees in business that if you make 20,000, people are going to buy 20,000. It doesn't work like that. So if you want one of these bags, join the GWA Facebook group, follow them on Instagram, and just keep your eyes open for when they drop these bags. Alternately, you could do what I did, which is buy this bag on the secondhand market. Again, the GWA Facebook group, uh, the Carryology Classified Facebook group, um, bag communities on Reddit, eBay. eBay's probably the worst place, I think. Poshmark. You can get your hands, Mercari. You can get your hands on a second-hand bag. This one set me back about 250 bucks. Okay? It was used. It's in great condition. But you can still get these bags. Again, it, it retailed for 280 I got it for 250 used. Hmm, not bad. Not bad at the end of the day. Not bad. So, what do we make of this? Is it worth 280 to begin with? I don't know. I don't know. It, it is a really well-made bag, and the features are really great. It's a, it's a sweet spot for a lot of people. As a 20-liter EDC bag, it's got all the features most requested by folks, I think. It's got the water bottle holder. It's got the morale, um, pa pa morale patch panel on the front. It's got customizability and modularity inside with the hook and loop inside. It's got a nice back panel with nice straps and a good grab handle. It's a good overall bag. It's one that I would consider if I was looking for, you know, what's a simple backpack that I'm never gonna be mad at? This kind of bag, it, it's kind of in that sweet spot like with the 19 liter conceal pack from Brown Buffalo, the Air City Pack. Like, you're, you're never gonna be upset that you own this thing. Um, it's just good. It's like Civic half zip. Uh, yeah, it's, 
it's really, really good. It's a good bag. And I think the thing that I would just warn you of is when you join those groups, you can get into kind of a FOMO situation where you want to get the next drop, whether you need it or not. So with all things bags, you kind of have to decide, are you buying bags for utility? Are you a collector? Or are you in business? Are you flipping bags? Are you buying and selling bags? And I think that's, that's what you have to answer for yourself if you're gonna decide whether or not $280 for a crew bag is worth it or not. But only buy it because you love it. Don't buy it because of scarcity. Don't buy it because you know somebody else likes it a lot. Really ask yourself, do I want this? I'm not lecturing you, I'm just you know speaking from experience. There have been a couple of times where I've purchased an item because of artificial sense of urgency created by a drop. And then, you know, a day later, 10 seconds later, when the dopamine wears off, you say, I don't know. I don't know if I needed that. I don't know if I want that. Now, the good news is with a lot of those things, they're eminently resellable, but you just got to make sure you are a member of the communities where these things are bought, sold, and traded so that you do have a place to unload it if you don't enjoy it, if you don't want it. Um, and then you do usually, not always, usually end up taking a bit of a loss because there's no guarantees on the market on these things. Just like there's no guarantees on the market for, you know, what are they called? Kanye's shoes, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Air Jordans will go with instead because I know what I'm talking about with those a little bit. Um, or, you know, Gore and Brother Animal Farm hats or anything, right? Actual stock on the stock market. There's no guarantees if you're in buying and selling and trading territory. So with anything, live within your means, have fun and decide, do I love it? Do I want it? Do I need it? It's never really the question to ask because nobody needs any of this, I don't think. Um, you could go to Goodwill and buy a backpack if you really just needed a bag as cheaply as possible. I think I'm wandering into philosophical territory and dangerously close to lecturing territory, so I'm going to give it a rest. Um, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this bag. Let me know what you think about the GWA crew, about the GWA brand in general. Um, don't think you could argue that it's not quality stuff, because it sure as heck is. Um, you just have to decide whether or not it's worth the money. For you, um, I like it a lot. Very glad to own this bag. I don't think I'm going to keep it, though, because... I want an exterior laptop compartment, and that's where the Citadel comes in. So that'll be my next video. Stay tuned for that. Everybody, we will see you next time. Thanks for all the support. Bye for now.